Today we have with us Dr. Lina Deshpande, developmental pediatrician. She specializes in a number of developmental disorders seen in children. Today the doctor will tell us about autism and disorders associated with the condition. Autism is a severe form of neurodevelopmental disorder where a child has problems in communication, socialization and has various behavioral problems in, uh, in form of uh, repetitive behavior, restricted play uh, interests um, and uh, sometimes very uh, unusual interests. There is a huge range of symptoms, so sometimes the symptoms are milder some children have uh, problems uh, more in the communication area, some children have more in socialization and that's why we usually use the term autistic spectrum disorder which is an umbrella term to encompass all these neurodevelopmental problems which have these three core problems areas. Now that we know what autism is, could you tell us, is this condition common? See in India there are not many studies which show us, uh, which give us a, gives us a very clear estimate of what the problem is in India as such but it is thought to be comparable to the rest of the world. And at present, the current estimates tell us that one in 250 children fall under the autistic spectrum. Now, if you look at the figures from 20 years ago, uh, there was something like uh, one or two children in 10,000 who, uh, who was diagnosed with autism or autistic spectrum disorder. There's a lot of research going on whether there is actual increase in numbers or is the increase in numbers, the sudden jump in numbers, is it because of increased awareness? Is it because we are uh, diagnosing milder cases? Is it because we are diagnosing milder cases earlier? So there is a lot of research whether there is anything more environmentally which is causing this jump in numbers. See the common symptoms are all related to the ma three main core problems in autism. That of communication, socialization and restricted behavior. And what are the symptoms parents should look out for? When we talk about communication, we talk about verbal communication, which is speech and language. We also talk about non-verbal communication. So when we are communicating, we use a lot of gestures, we use facial expressions, we point. The problem in children with autism is that they have problems with verbal and non-verbal communication. So that there might be children who may have no speech at all, but they are not trying to compensate or not trying to communicate in any way to their parent or the caregiver by pointing or gesturing. Because it's a range of symptoms which we find in autistic spectrum, some children may have no speech, some children just repeat or echo the speech which they have heard without any meaning. Then there are some children who have a very good vocabulary, but they have problems with what we call as social communication. There are some children who are simply unable to uh, sustain or start a conversation. So there's a range of communicative problems in children and one of these can be picked up by the parents. Now autism when you talk it is not just one symptom but a combination of symptoms. So a child might have problems with or should have some issues with socialization. When a child's name is called the child does not respond with a head turn. That's a very important and very early clue that a parent can pick up. The child does not give eye contact to name. The child does not give eye contact to request something. The child is not uh, uh, self-involved, he's not interacting with other children, he's not playing interactive games with his parent. He prefers to have solitary play. So there are all these uh, social uh, skills which are quite behind in a child with uh, autistic spectrum disorder which can be picked up. Then the mother usually knows, uh, you know, there's something wrong in this child, there's something wrong with my child quite early on but she is unable to pay, put a finger to it. The child may also have, uh, will also have very poor pretend play or imaginative play. Now usually what happens is by the child, by the time the child is 18 months of age, the child's child starts playing uh, in a pretend play manner. Um, this will be lacking or delayed in a child with autistic spectrum. Children with autistic spectrum uh, disorder also have various what we call as sensory symptoms. So they end up uh, uh, spinning themselves, they end up walking on their toes, they might be body rocking. Uh, they might be flapping their hands when they are very excited. So there are a varied uh, range and uh, there is a range of symptoms which uh, a child with autistic spectrum can have which might alert a parent that something is not quite right. Certainly, if the child is not babbling by 12 months, if the child is not gesturing in the, in the way of waving bye-bye or pointing by 12 months, if the child does not have single words by 16 months, 
if the child is not saying two word phrases by two word meaningful phrases by 24 months or at any point there is a regression of the child's speech so the child has developed speech and then lost it or there's a regression of the child's social skills parents definitely need to be alerted and they should seek their doctor's advice as soon as possible to see if these are pointing towards autism. So, if a parent notices either of the symptoms you've mentioned, what tests do doctors usually perform to diagnose the condition? See, diagnosis of autism and autistic spectrum disorder is clinical. So, there is no test or blood test or imaging which is going to help you to diagnose autism. It's based on the symptoms which the child is showing. There are certain criteria which a child has to fulfill to for us to come to a, clear, a conclusion of autism. Tests in autism are done to rule out other conditions which may mimic autism like a hearing problem. So if a child is not hearing very well or the child is deaf, deaf then those children might show symptoms like autism. They may not respond to their name, they will not have their speech. So we definitely need to make sure that the child's hearing is okay before we say that a child has autism or autistic spectrum disorder. Other tests which like MRI or genetic testings are done to rule out other conditions which may cause autism. So uh, children with, uh, for example, a fragile X syndrome or a tuberous sclerosis. In these children, uh, autism is known to coexist and hence we can look for these um, uh, conditions in children who have autism if it is clinically indicated. And what causes autism? There's a lot of research going on on this. There is no one uh, cause which has been identified which is shown to be linking directly to autism. What is known that there's a lot of genetic conditions which are associated with autism and the present thought is that there's a combination of genetics and environment which ends up causing autism or autistic spectrum disorder in children. If the child is diagnosed with autism, what kind of treatment would you provide to the child? There is no cure yet which has been found for autism. But there are various therapies and various ways of teaching a child with autism. And it has been found that earlier we diagnose autism, earlier we intervene with these therapies, the better the outcome in the future. The various therapies which have been found to be very useful in children on the spectrum are occupational therapy in the form of sensory integration, communication therapy to help the child's speech as well as non-verbal communication, behavioral therapy, and then there are various other therapies too uh, and various other ways of teaching a child with autism. Medically, we use medications in very selected cases of autism. And these medications are used only to improve some of the symptoms like irritability or hyperactivity or aggressive behavior in case these are not being addressed or helped by therapy. Now again, these medications have to be used very carefully and has to be tailor-made for the child's and the child's symptoms. Apart from this, there's a lot of well-intentioned but not well-informed advice which a lot of people give. Also, there are, because there is no single cure for autism yet, there is no single cause for autism uh, detected yet. There are a lot of new and novel therapies which are coming up every few months. Parents end up getting very confused about whether to use these therapies or not, whether to use these treatments which can be very, very expensive and there, is, there may be no evidence to suggest their uh, value in research. What they need to do if they hear of another uh, new therapy as such or a new model of treatment, they should do their research, they should talk to their pediatrician, get some unbiased op opinions and not fall prey to just marketing gimmicks of uh, different companies. Doctor, tell us, can a child with autism attend regular school? Why are there special schools to cater to these children? Children on the autistic spectrum, the main question almost always most parents ask is, will he go to normal school? Now, I have a lot of children who are a lot of patients with autistic spectrum who are attending normal mainstream school. As long as the school is proactive, of course these children can attend mainstream schools. I have a lot of patients who are on the autistic spectrum, who are attending mainstream school and doing fairly well there. The government of India has also given concessions for children, educational concessions for children who are on the autistic spectrum and all children should avail of these uh, concessions so that they can progress in their learning ability as per their potential. Found our information useful? 
If you find the video helped you, please like it. Tell us what you think about our videos. Please leave a comment. To watch our other videos, click here. For more on your health, log on to healthstarindia.com.